From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13, brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. It's unthinkable. After 10 years, a Tamaqua man admits to raping and sexually assaulting two girls when they were just three and five. That's our top story on News 13 tonight. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kathy Bozinski. It's an unbelievable crime. A 44-year-old Tamaqua man is charged with raping a young girl and sexually abusing another more than a decade ago. State police say Robert Lee Rader admitted to the crimes and is charged with rape of a child and aggravated indecent assault, sexual abuse of children and unlawful contact with a minor, as well as misdemeanor counts in connection with the crimes. Troopers say the incidents took place back in 2001 and came to light this year when a community cleanup uncovered 53 Polaroid pictures depicting child nudity and sexual assault. After a nationwide search to identify the victims in the pictures, the parents of a girl came forth and identified their daughter and a second girl. The mother said in 2001 she had a relationship with Raider and he would babysit her daughter and knew the other girl, who at that time were three and five. When police confronted Raider, they said he told them, okay, you got me, it was me, I took the photos, I'm sick, and I never meant to hurt anybody. Raider is in the Schuylkill County prison tonight. It's been one week since the massacre in Newtown, Connecticut. A driving rain and a dreary morning couldn't keep folks away from a moment of silence memorial there to pay respects to 26 people who were killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Officials scheduled the event to recognize victims of the massacre that began at 9.30 a.m. last Friday when gunman Adam Lanza shot his way into Sandy Hook Elementary and launched a shooting spree at a second at the school taking 26 lives, including 20 children, and then his own. Tents and plastic were used to protect the stuffed animals, candles, notes, and pictures that have been set up as a memorial to the victims. The usual bustling hallways were silent at Heights Terrace Elementary around 9.30 this morning. Teachers stood side by side as they bowed their heads in honor of the children and teachers killed during the mass shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary. Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett asked for the moment of silence to be taken in Pennsylvania Friday to mourn and honor the victims of the Newtown shooting. Well, social media has spawned rumors of a number of copycat violence at schools in our area, among them the Crestwood School District. Yesterday, administrators there sent out alerts to parents trying to dispel those rumors of potential violence. Fortunately, as a result, district offices were then deluged by phone calls and emails, not only from parents at Crestwood, but also from other areas who hear rumors about the problem. Ultimately, the day went off without a hitch, with all campuses having early holiday dismissal. Pretty much the same situation in the Hazleton Area School District. Students reported veiled threats that a shooting similar to the one in Newtown would happen at the high school. District took a proactive approach, making it clear that the social media chatter was only rumor and that the district was well prepared. The school is safe. As I said, we have a uh, very effective security force. We have very effective law enforcement uh, and the school is absolutely, totally safe. And not only are students on the high school campuses searched before entering the building, but they also th go through metal detectors. The same goes for every visitor who enters those buildings. Well, it's that time of the year when everybody deserves to drink and be merry, but state police want us to do it in moderation. State police at Hazleton say they'll be conducting sobriety checkpoints in southern Luzerne County over the entire Christmas holiday weekend. It's in support of the PSP Selective Enforcement Initiative Against Drunk Driving. The program is inclined to reduce alcohol-related traffic crashes through sobriety checkpoints. No word on the location of those checkpoints, but they will be in random locations throughout Greater Hazleton. And it's not just drunk driving which will keep troopers on the lookout. As Stephanie Gorney tells us, PennDOT has an entire program to help make sure everyone's holiday travels are safe ones. It's the holiday season, and that means it's time to eat, drink, and be merry. It's also that time when many people hit the roadways to travel to their Christmas destinations. Due to the increased traffic, Penda has recently started their Operation Safe Holiday, which is set to crack down on aggressive and impaired driving. Michael Toluto from PennDOT says that travelers can expect to see increased police coverage on the road throughout this holiday time. During this time of year, up till January um, 1st, New Year's, they're out, out in uh, patrols, they'll be out doing DUI checkpoints and being aware of, of more people out there driving during the holiday season. Impaired driving is unfortunately very popular around this time of year. 
About 30 people a day are killed in the month of December due to driving under the influence, and a total of 775 people were killed last December. There are ways, though, to stay safe during the holiday season, and James May of PennDOT has some advice for people who are planning to travel around this time of year. Well, as always, make sure that you yourself, obviously, are never drinking and driving, that you're never impaired in any way. Make sure that you buckle up, because even though you may be a safe driver, there are somebody else on the road may not be. So make sure you buckle up. Make sure you take your time. Uh, you know, a lot of us are in rushes to, to get over the river and through the woods into Grandma's house or wherever we're going for the holidays. So take your time. PennDOT says to be aware of the current weather conditions and take caution when driving in the wet and frigid conditions. Stephanie Gorney, News 13, Hazleton. And still ahead on News 13, it may be a holiday weekend, but sports never takes a holiday. Fred Barletta will be here with the action. And then we'll continue with the News 13 countdown of the top 10 stories of 2012. It's number six on our countdown, coming up on News 13. It's time for the Movie Minute on News 13, your weekly look at what's playing inside the Regal Cinema 10 just outside the Laurel Mall. New this weekend. You remember Pete and Debbie, don't you? They were the designated grown-ups played by Paul Rudd and Leslie Mann in Knocked Up. Now they're the main characters in This Is 40, Judd Apatow's sort of sequel to Knocked Up. Also playing Reacher, plenty of hobbits both in 2D and in 3D, along with Rise of the Guardians. And don't forget to join the Regal Crown Club for free to earn points towards free popcorn, drinks, and movie tickets. And for all the showtimes at Regal Cinema 10, just call 450-7454, or to speak to a movie attendant, call 450-7340. And to find the entire Regal Cinema schedule online, just visit our website at sspTV.com. Time now to continue News 13's top stories of 2012. It was a story that made headlines for weeks. Hazleton's top cop involved in an accident with an elderly man who ended up seriously hurt. Chief Frank DeAndrea's Broad Street crash comes in at number six on our top ten. Jasmine Brooks reports. Man down. An elderly man laid in the middle of the road here at the intersection of Broad and Laurel Streets in Hazleton back in May. The man was ejected from his motor scooter, leaving him with some serious injuries. Before 80-year-old Walter Bloss of Drums reached the ground, he hit the hood of an SUV. The SUV, property of the Hazleton City Police Department, with the Chief of Police, Frank DeAndrea, behind the wheel. The accident would lead to a long investigation to find out who was responsible for the crash. The senior citizen who was driving along Laurel Street or the top cop himself who was coming along Broad Street. Witnesses at the scene told News 13 that Chief DeAndrea had the green light, while Bloss said he had the green light to ride through the intersection. State police accident reconstructionists completed the investigation. The report stated that Chief DeAndrea, who was behind the wheel of the department's SUV at the time, failed to stop for a red light. But since no witnesses testified in court to actually seeing a red light ran, a district judge handed down a not guilty verdict to the chief. The city is currently involved in litigation for that traffic light malfunctioning. Jasmine Brooks, News 13, Hazleton. And let's check the winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played. The uh, daily number, 021. The big four, 6500. Kinto, 13547. And the treasure hunt, 3861725. Hope you won. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news. First tonight, happy birthday to our own Kathy Bazinski. She celebrates on Saturday from your family, friends, and all of us here at SSP TV. Also tonight, happy birthday, Christine Gorski of Beaver Meadows from your family and friends. And also to her granddaughter, Larissa Gorski. They celebrate on the same day. Happy birthday from your family and friends. That's tonight's social news. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Daniel T. Nowitzki of Weatherly. Mass will be held Saturday at 10 a.m. in Our Lady of Lord's Church. Arrangements are by the Philip J. Jeffries Funeral Home. Marie A. Firo of Hazleton. Mass will be Saturday at 11 a.m. in the Queen of Heaven Parish at Our Lady of Grace Church. The Firo Funeral Home is handling the arrangements. And Joanne Vitaco of Drums. Arrangements will be announced by the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. 
Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop, located on 15th Street in Hazleton. Free delivery to all local funeral homes. Call 570-454-0111. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. and Ron Marchetti. Well, it was only two years ago that the Scranton Lady Knights were the district quad A champions in basketball. They had a nice little run there and became the team to beat. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Last night, Scranton came knocking at McGee and Gymnasium Hazelton Area High School and this was no contest. This is one of those cliches where the game was not even as close as that final score indicates. Now, Alyssa Sitch, she was uh, fired up. Well, her sister, former Lady Cougar, now down at Westchester, she was uh, in the house last night as what happened. Again, a lot of the kids come back at Christmas time. Maybe that fired her up. She led the way with 13 points. It was really a balanced scoring attack. You wonder how bad this game was, folks? You see the 24 points Scranton scored? That would have given them a tie, basically, in the early second quarter. I mean, early second quarter. They were losing this game 22 to nothing at one point. So uh, Joe Gavi and company took it easy on them. Hard to figure out. This is the uh, large school up in Lackawanna County, and the Lady Cougars whipped them. Now, let's go from girls to boys, and let's head south. Schuylkill League, wow. Uh, here's where they didn't hold the score down. Monoy rips Weatherly, and whenever you see it creep it up to 50 points, you just scratch your head and say, wow. Meanwhile, North Schuylkill, a little bit closer game. They get by Panther Valley. Marion and MMI, well, you know, remember when this was an old shootout in the Anthracite League? The Marion Phillies usually got the upper hand then. They did right here, 34-21 the final. I think I remember Marion and MMI playing an Anthracite League Championship. St. Joe's Gym, circa 74. Have to look that one up. Blue Mountain, Bombs, Tamaqua. Final on that one you see right there. Let's go to swimming. Hazelton area. Uh, they went behind Ryan Paisley, who took a couple of first. And the Cougars, Dunk Scranton, 105-75. It uh, was almost an identical score on the girls' side of thing. The only difference, the only Ryan Paisley into the girls' meet it was Becca Yanis that was leading the way, 114-69. Lady Cougars they, uh, finish up before the Christmas holiday. Here's what you got today. Girls basketball, Weatherly's going to Monoy, North Schuylkill at Panther Valley, Blue Mountain at Tamaqua. That's really all of the boys' games we had last night. We're just flipping them around right there. And in swimming, East Stroudsburg South. They'll come down 209. They'll take on Tamaqua. And we'll see what happens there. Of course, uh, this weekend, Philadelphia Eagles got the Redskins, and although it's a meaningless game for the Birds, it's a lot on the table for the Redskins. The uh, Cowboys in that heated division tie, they have the Saints, and the New York football Giants will be down in Baltimore to take on the Ravens. Hey, you know, you uh, might want to start thinking about heating your home this winter. You could do it for less with American Premium Coal Sales. They offer locally mined quality anthracite at a very, very fair price. It's available for pickup or delivery. And you know, if you order six tons or more, you'll qualify for a $10 per ton discount. Now, want more information? You got to contact American Premium Coal Sales. There's the number. It's even toll free if you're outside of the area. And they're there Monday through Friday, seven to four. There's their Saturday hours. Boy, can you beat good old fashioned anthracite coal to heat your home. It's the first day of winter and the world has survived. It's also a bad hair day too. Hi everybody, on this Friday, December 21st, the shortest day of the year. Let's review. Dunmore High lost their bid for the Class A State Football Championship last Friday to Clareton, 20 to nothing. It was Clareton's 63rd consecutive win and its fourth straight state title. That is what we call a dynasty. On Monday night, the Hazel Area Cougars basketball team lost at Pocono Mountain West 74-61. Sal Biazzi of the Cougars tickled the twines for 32 points in a losing effort. Hazel Area is 1-3. They play GAR tomorrow at home. The Lady Cougars rolled over Scranton. Prep and Scranton last night. Gabriel's gals are 4-1. Marion Catholic lost their 
first game to Shen Val by two, but they rebounded last night with a win over MMI. The Colts are 5-1. and one. The Marion Phillies defeated Nativity and the Shenandoah Valley. Gabby Green hit for 20 against Shen Val. Brutal's Brigade is 4-1. and one. The Wadley boys beat MMI in Freeland. Brett Stallone led the way with 18. Then they knocked off Nativity by 9. But last night, the records were humbled into reality by Mahana Area 82-36. Cannes Clan are 4-1. and one. The Lady Wreckers split two. They're 2-3. Two the Hazel Area wrestlers topped Abington Heights and Crestwood. The Cougars swimmers swept past Scranton Prep and Scranton. The boys are 4-1. and one. The girls 5-0. and oh. What else? Selena Garzio, a sophomore at Hazel Area, has earned first-team All-State honors in field hockey. And A.J. Gasser, a junior, also the Cougars, was named to the Wyoming Valley Conference football coaches all-star first team. Jim Boheim, head basketball coach at Syracuse, became only the third college coach to reach 900 wins behind Mike Krzyzewski and Bob Knight. Coach K is at 937 and counting. Incidentally, Duke is currently number one at 10-0 since previously number one Indiana was knocked off by Butler this week. Football coach Brian Kelly of Notre Dame has been named AP College Coach of the Year, and Johnny Manziel of Texas A&M, a freshman, has been named AP College Football Player of the Year, and Michael Phelps, the swimmer, was voted Male Athlete of the Year by the Associated Press. Finally, Pat Brogan's Dystonia Benefit is tonight at the Elks Club on East Broad Street from 5 to 9. Admission is $20. See you there or right here on Christmas Eve. Till then, be a good sport and stay loose. And time now for our regional weather from the National Weather Service. Let's check out the radar. As you can see, this morning's rain and flurries kind of starting to move out of the area. A break for a while, but there will be some precipitation moving back in. It could bring a little bit of snow. Tonight's creative condition, Texas, away from all the cold. It's from Kylie Fugit, a fourth grader at West Hazleton Elementary Middle School. She takes us out on the ocean on a hot summer day, and she says there's an adorable dolphin enjoying the warm weather, and he certainly is. Time now for a look at the News 13 weather from the National Weather Service. First for Greater Hazleton. Tonight, snow showers likely mainly between 9 o'clock and 1 a.m., low around 23. And on Saturday, a chance of snow showers. Cloudy with a high of 33, low down to 22. Moving over to Schuylkill County. Tonight, a chance of snow showers. Cloudy with a low 28. And then on Saturday, scattered snow showers with a high near 34, lows down to 25 degrees. Well, bah humbug, the infamous miser Mr. Scrooge was brought back to life by Mrs. Carroll's seventh grade class this holiday season as they studied Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Students at Heights Terrace Elementary made life-size cutouts of the story's most important character. Whoa, look at that. That's the ghost of Christmas yet to come. And had some fun reading and acting out in the play in class. And if that wasn't enough, the class went to see The Christmas Carol performed live in Bloomsburg earlier this month. The kids say watching the play really brought the reading to life. I think um, you learn more from it because when you're reading it, you're really concentrating on your part, not the whole story. So when you hear the other actors act it out, you feel like you're in the story and you're getting it. The kids say the most important thing they learned from their great big Christmas Carol project was the important family happiness, especially during the holiday season. That was some great artwork there. Plenty more news and info headed your way on News 13. It's a story of giving back to your community. A local business gives its annual Christmas gift to some folks who really need it most. That story and much more news when the 13 crew comes right back. It's the time of year when we can all use a little holiday cheer. Well, a local business and members of the community are going to make this Christmas a little brighter for those in need. That's our top story on News 13 at 4.30. From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Good evening and thanks for staying with us. I'm Kathy Bazinski. Well, it's not just Santa giving gifts this time of year. The Berger family dealership is spreading the holiday spirit with their You Can Be a Santa fundraiser. Christina Papa was there today when the Berger family handed out a little something extra to charities throughout the area. You might call her one of Santa's little helpers. Mary Angela, along with the Berger family dealership, want the greater Hazleton community to enjoy Christmas without worrying about their wallets. And I've always referred to Mr. Berger over these years as the Santa Claus of Hazleton because he comes through, you know, right before the, the holiday season has ended and we're able to meet the needs of people who ask for, for service. 
Today, Santa's little helpers, including the Salvation Army and Catholic Social Services, gathered at Burger's dealership to pick up their gifts for the community. Uh, today we're at Burger Family Dealerships, and what we're doing is accepting gift certificates uh, from the, the dealership to be able to help in our Christmas distribution this year. And spreading the holiday cheer couldn't come at a better time for folks in the area. We're very grateful because this year um, the increase in the number of people who have made requests has caused it, uh, some difficulty for us to be able to meet all those needs. Every year the Burger family holds the You Can Be Santa fundraiser where $50 is donated for every vehicle purchased from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Now Mary Angela says she's thankful to the Burger family for giving to the charities like the Salvation Army, especially during the holiday season. This will definitely help fill the packages, you know, for people um, who made requests for us. So we're very grateful. This year, the company raised $4,000 and now 160 gift certificates are being spread around the Hazelton area to local families in need during the holiday season. Folks around the area say people are in need of help all the time, but it's especially nice to spread the holiday cheer. Great. Yeah. I think everybody should get so. Christina Papa, News 13, Greater Hazelton. And there was plenty of giving in the holiday spirit all around Greater Hazelton today. There was a very special party for some special kids who attend the Poplar Street School. The Helping Hand Society puts on the celebration and it has a twist. While Santa was on hand and promised to deliver presents on Christmas, students who were preparing for health care occupations at Hazelton Area High School delivered presents to the little ones who face many challenges in everyday life. I think speaks volumes about our youth and the youth in our area and I'm very proud and privileged to have them here. They're very accommodating, they're very sweet with the children and they, they learn really how important it is to give. There was also plenty of pizza and other goodies for the youngsters at today's Helping Hands Christmas Party. Well, bah humbug, the infamous miser Mr. Scrooge was brought back to life at Mrs. Carell's 7th grade class this holiday season as they studied Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. The students at Heights Terrace made life-size cutouts of the story's most important characters and had some fun reading and acting out the play in class. And if that wasn't enough, the class went to see The Christmas Carol performed live in the Bloomsburg Theater earlier this month. The kids say watching the play really brought the reading to life. I think um, you learn more from it because when you're reading it, you're really concentrating on your part, not the whole story. So when you hear the other actors act it out, you feel like you're in the story and you're getting it. And the kids say the most important thing they learned from their great big Christmas Carol project was the importance of family and happiness especially during the holiday season. God bless us, everyone. Well, as you can tell, students all over Greater Hazleton are spreading some cheer this week. Like fun. News 13 stopping by the Valley Ent Elementary Middle School on Tuesday, where it looked like a couple of snowflakes were falling in the gymnasium. Look at that! The entire second grade class, including Janine Mazurkevich's son Mason, presented their Christmas musical. Proud moms and dads, along with other loved ones, watched on as the students sang their hearts out. Like fun there too. Thursday morning, the third graders hit the stage dressed in their holiday best, singing some Christmas classics, including Frosty the Snowman and Deck the Halls. And there's Janine's daughter Alyssa. She was among the many talented students who put on a very creative performance for family and friends. The little ones had a blast bringing some of your holiday favorites to life. Well, it's the time of year when everybody deserves to drink and be merry, but state police want us to do it in moderation. State police at Hazleton say they'll be conducting sobriety checkpoints in southern Luzerne County over the entire Christmas holiday weekend. It's in support of the PSP Selective Enforcement Initiative Against Drunk Driving. Programs declined to reduce alcohol-related traffic crashes through sobriety checkpoints. No word on the location of those checkpoints, but they will be in random locations throughout Greater Hazleton. And it's not just drunk driving, which will keep troopers on the lookout. As Stephanie Gorney tells us, PennDOT has an entire program to help make sure everyone's holiday travels are safe ones. It's the holiday season, and that means it's time to eat, drink, and be merry. It's also that time when many people hit the roadways to travel to their Christmas destinations. Due to the increased traffic, PennDOT has recently started their Operation Safe Holiday, which is set to crack down on aggressive and impaired driving. 
Michael Toluto from PennDOT says that travelers can expect to see increased police coverage on the road throughout this holiday time. During this time of year, up till January um, 1st, New Year's, they're out, uh, out in uh, patrols, they'll be out doing DUI checkpoints and being aware of, of more people out there driving during the holiday season. Impaired driving is unfortunately very popular around this time of year. About 30 people a day are killed in the month of December due to driving under the influence, and a total of 775 people were killed last December. There are ways, though, to stay safe during the holiday season, and James May of PennDOT has some advice for people who are planning to travel around this time of year. Well, as always, make sure that you yourself, obviously, are never drinking and driving, that you're never impaired in any way. Make sure that you buckle up, because even though you may be a safe driver, there are somebody else on the road may not be. So make sure you buckle up. Make sure you take your time. Uh, you know, a lot of us are in rushes to, to get over the river and through the woods into Grandma's house or wherever we're going for the holidays. So take your time. PennDOT says to be aware of the current weather conditions and take caution when driving in the wet and frigid conditions. Stephanie Gorney, News 13, Hazleton. And coming up on News 13, he's admitted the unthinkable. A Tamaqua man under arrest for the sexual assault of two small children 10 years ago. And later, the News 13 countdown to the top 10 stories of 2012 continues. A top cop has a nasty accident still ahead on 13. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Sand Springs Country Club. Here is one of their weekly restaurant specials. All specials served with soup or salad. And tonight's feature dish is the extra thin crust pierogi pizza for just $7.95. It's the chef's extra thin crust pizza topped with homemade mashed potatoes and sautéed onions, completed with rich cheddar and mozzarella cheese, and baked until crispy. Located at 10 Clubhouse Drive in Drums, PA, call us at 570-788-5845, visit us at sandspringsgolf.com, or you can find us on Facebook. It's an unbelievable crime. A 44-year-old Tamaqua man is charged with raping a young girl and sexually abusing another more than a decade ago. State police say Robert Lee Rader admitted to the crimes and is charged with rape and child and aggravated indecent assault, sexual abuse of children and unlawful contact with a minor, as well as a misdemeanor counts in connection with those crimes. Troopers say the incidents took place in Tamaqua in 2001 and came to light this year when a community cleanup uncovered 53 Polaroid pictures depicting child nudity and sexual assault. After a nationwide search to identify the victims in the pictures, the parents of a girl came forth and identified their daughter and a second girl. The mother said in 2001 she had a relationship with Raider and he would babysit her daughter and knew the other girl, who were then three and five. When police confronted Raider, Raider they said he told them, OK, you got me, it was me, I took the photos, I'm sick and I never meant to hurt anyone. Raider is in the Schuylkill County Prison. It's been one week since the massacre in Newtown, Connecticut. A driving rain and a dreary morning couldn't keep folks there away from a moment of silence memorial to pay their respects to the 26 people who were killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Officials scheduled the event to recognize victims of the massacre that began at 9.30 a.m. last Friday when Adam Lanza shot his way into Sandy Hook Elementary and launched a shooting spree at the school, taking 26 lives, including 20 children and then his own. Tents and plastic were used to protect the stuffed animals, candles, notes, and pictures that have been set up as a memorial to the victims. And the usual bustling hallways were silent at Heights Terrace Elementary around 9.30 this morning. Teachers stood side by side as they bowed their heads in honor of the children and teachers killed during the mass shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary. Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett asked for that moment of silence to be taken in Pennsylvania this morning to mourn the victims of the Newtown shooting. Social media has spawned rumors of a number of copycat violence at schools in our area, among them Crestwood School District. Yesterday, administrators there sent out alerts to parents trying to dispel those rumors of potential violence. Unfortunately, as a result, district offices were then deluged by phone calls and emails from not only parents in the district, but also from other areas who heard rumors about the problems. Ultimately, the day went off without a hitch, with all campuses having early holiday dismissal. And pretty much the same situation in the Hazleton Area School District. Students reported veiled threats that a shooting similar to the one in Newtown would happen at the high school. The district took a proactive approach, making it clear that the social media chatter was only rumor and that the district was well prepared. The school is safe. 
As I said, we have a, a very effective security force. We have very effective law enforcement, uh, and the school is absolutely, totally safe. And not only are students on the high school campus search before entering the building, but they also go through a metal detector. The same goes for every visitor who enters this building. Time now to continue News 13's top stories of 2012. It was a story that made headlines for weeks. Hazleton's top cop involved in an accident with an elderly man who ended up seriously hurt. Chief Frank DeAndrea's Broad Street crash comes in on number six. In our top ten, Jasmine Brooks reports. Man down. An elderly man laid in the middle of the road here at the intersection of Broad and Laurel Streets in Hazleton back in May. The man was ejected from his motor scooter, leaving him with some serious injuries. Before 80-year-old Walter Bloss of Drums reached the ground, he hit the hood of an SUV. The SUV, property of the Hazleton City Police Department, with the Chief of Police, Frank D'Andrea, behind the wheel. The accident would lead to a long investigation to find out who was responsible for the crash. The senior citizen who was driving along Laurel Street or the top cop himself who was coming along Broad Street. Witnesses at the scene told News 13 that Chief DeAndrea had the green light, while Bloss said he had the green light to ride through the intersection. State police accident reconstructionists completed the investigation. The report stated that Chief DeAndrea, who was behind the wheel of the department's SUV at the time, failed to stop for a red light. But since no witnesses testified in court to actually seeing a red light ran, a district judge handed down a not guilty verdict to the chief. The city is currently involved in litigation for that traffic light malfunctioning. Jasmine Brooks, News 13, Hazleton. And time now for our regional weather from the National Weather Service. Checking the radar, as you can see, morning's rain and flurry is kind of moving out, a break for a while, but there will definitely still be a little bit of precipitation moving in. Could bring a small amount of snow, especially overnight. Tonight's creative condition has nothing to do with snow. It takes us away from the cold. It's by Kali Fugit, a fourth grader at West Hazleton Elementary Middle School. She takes us out of the ocean on a hot summer day, and she says there's an adorable dolphin enjoying the warm weather, and it certainly looks like he is. Time now for a look at the News 13 weather from the National Weather Service. First for Greater Hazleton tonight, snow showers likely mainly between 9 p.m. and 1 a.m., low down to 23 degrees. And tomorrow, a chance of snow showers, cloudy with a high near 33, low of 22. Sunday, mostly sunny with a high of 32, low around 21. Monday, partly sunny with a high near 31. Monday night, some snow likely, though, mostly cloudy with a low around 25, and that could mean we might have a white Christmas with some snow showers likely, high near 31 degrees. Moving over to Schuylkill County tonight, a chance of snow showers, cloudy with a low around 28. Saturday, scattered snow showers with a high near 34, low of 25. Sunday, mostly sunny with a high near 36, low all the way down to 20. On Monday, mostly sunny with a high near 33, low around 22. Then for Christmas Day, mostly cloudy with a high near 35 degrees. And still ahead on News 13, Fred Barletta with all the sports on tap heading into this holiday weekend. And then some students at a local parochial school put on a holiday program with the emphasis on the reason for the season. When News 13 continues. And we leave you tonight with some absolutely adorable music about the true meaning of Christmas. It was just a small part of a beautiful celebration at McAdoo Catholic School this afternoon. Parents and families packed the auditorium to listen to their little ones sing and take part in the very first ever prayer service called the Blessing of the Crib. The school wanted the school holiday to begin by emphasizing the reason for the season, but it was followed by good old-fashioned Christmas sing-along, which featured plenty of Rudolph and Frosty and Santa as well. And that's News 13 for your Friday. Thank you so much for joining us. You can catch this newscast again with rebroadcasts throughout tonight or just go to News 13's website any old time, ssptv.com, where you'll always find the local and regional news you need and the community news you want. 
And the entire News 13 team would like to wish our director, Andy Fisher, a happy birthday. We're both having his birthdays this weekend. Happy birthday, Andy. I'm Kathy Bozinski. You have a great night.